Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to be um, looking at foil. Good old foil. And what can it be used for and what can't it be used for? Well actually, it can be used for pretty much most things to do with sculpting, with polymer clay, unless you're doing small stuff like um, earrings and stuff like that, when obviously you don't need it. So, let's uh, get started. So basically, um, with the bigger sculptures, I tend to use um, foil for the, for the base, but you you need to have some substance before you put the foil, if you're making something relatively big. So normally around the house, you can find stuff like uh, old, old tin cans or whatever, you can stuff them with foil, tape them together, and then stick some sort of, um, rod or metal rod or whatever and tape it all together to give give the armature some proper shape before you start with the foil um i'll show you some photos of that in a bit but basically um foil is king really because it 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 heats up in the oven so if your clay is sat on top of it obviously you're cooking the clay from the inside and obviously from the outside which means you get a very good finish on your clay um no soft patches and stuff like that. And that being said, when it comes to putting layers of foil on, if you need to add more layers, um, I used to use um, like a decorator's um, tape and uh, masking tape and stick extra layers on with that. And I sometimes still do with awkward bits, but I do kind of think that it stops the heat transfer in the oven a little bit. So I've sort of gone more for the glue gun. A glue gun is ideal because you can just uh, stick this stuff anywhere you want over the armature as you're building it and you can get better shaping and stuff like that. Obviously it's preference again, but um, that's that's what I tend to do. So um, how about we have a look first at some of my sculptures that I've done. Um, this one here is um, basically, I've done a few different ones, but this one's of the, the Cobra Snake. Um, this is how I started to build the uh, aluminium up and there is a little tiny bit of wire as you can see just coming out for the bottom jaw but again just pushing the pu pushing the tin foil together molding it into the shape of the of the snake I mean it's it's getting the base already where it needs to be before clay goes on so then you can see now I can lay the clay on and get the shaping going a lot easier because I've already done a lot of the hard work with the foil. Again, uh, moving on, this was for the uh, the lady's head that I built. Basically, it's again has a base in it. I think I can't remember what I used for the base in that, but again, it was something that I wasn't needing around the house anymore. So, always try and use stuff you've got lying around. I mean, it, I really can't remember what it's in there, but it's something interesting. <laughs> But it worked perfectly for what I, what I needed to do, which was to have some weight at the bottom, because I knew this one was going to be a big sculpture, and it definitely needed weight at the bottom. So that's the uh, that was the base. As you can see, I have used some decorators um, masking tape at the bottom of this one, um, and then there you go. Put the clay on. It's a completely different thing. So this is basically just showing you what I do. It's like with the tiger's head, uh, the one behind me here. I um. I researched the skull, the shape of the skull, then I made made the shape of the skull, which looked pretty bizarre, to be honest. This is the kind of thing I ended up with, which I thought doesn't look anything like a tiger at all. But you know what? When I started putting the clay on, it started to make perfect sense. And as you can see here, you can start to see how actually it is starting to look more like the shape of a tiger. So sometimes the bone structure can help with that type of thing. I know a lot of you are going to be doing really small stuff, maybe fictional characters and that type of thing. But if you were thinking of doing animals, just checking out the uh, the bone structure is is a really good idea to get your tin foil where it needs to be. This one was just something I was playing around with the idea of doing a much smaller one because I haven't really done anything small. And I was going to do something relatively small, like a, a lady sat down, but um, that one actually didn't, I didn't do anything with that. This one here, um, I've got metal bottles inside the bottom of here that are filled, what were they, with, um, I can't remember, something. <laughs> but it's pretty heavy. So I've got four metal bottles and then I've got the stem coming up out, which is shaped um, 
backwards and then forwards. And basically what that was, was um, a wardrobe, one of those um, wardrobes you can buy, you know, the ones that put the quick put up wardrobes, the canvas ones. I didn't need it anymore, but I found using the metal rods that came with that, ideal for this, ideal, because you can literally bend it any shape you want, and then you can just tape it all together, and then you, you've basically got a really solid base to start putting your tin foil down on. And again, now you can see I'm starting to layer it up with, with the tin foil. This was a, this one here was a pug, base for a pug. Um, it, the legs are actually um, like small toilet roll holders, basically. And then I basically built the frame up around that. So really there wasn't much else to that. It was just um, some cardboard, some toilet roll holders, and then on with, with the um, tin foil and again, very much using the tape on this this one. I don't think I'd started with glue gun at this point. Um, and this is just to show you what actually you can do with tin foil. It, it is it is mental actually what you can do. It's very robust stuff. I made this, and this is about three and a half foot tall by say three foot wide. It's huge. Um, I don't know what I was thinking of doing. I think I was trying to make some concrete fountain or something in my kitchen which was a really bad idea and needless to say I never actually finished it but I did go a long way with it and this was all from tin foil I just built it up um, and this is sort of where it got to it was like a mermaid coming out of a shell but I did all this with tin foil um, but it was huge and I had no idea how I was going to build it in my kitchen or how I was going to get a concrete mermaid out of out of my place. So, unfortunately, that one had to be shelved. But I did enjoy doing it. Um, this is again showing the, like the cardboard tubes and the wardrobe. Da -da. Just yeah, just make up a shape, get get everything on, and then before you start putting tin foil, it's perfect. It gives stability to the sculpture. Uh, it's not overly heavy but it does make this uh, sculpture sit nice and solid nice and flat and then you've got a really good base to start building up from uh, and there you go I'm starting to layer up the tin foil on top of that so it's really versatile this is another one I did um, I'll talk a bit more about that one on a later video um, yeah that's quite an interesting one we will definitely do that in about maybe a couple of videos time but um, that's just to give you some idea of uh, what you can do with this tin foil. It is, it is mental stuff. Um, so I would say don't use the tape, go glue gun um, and work it, work it that way really. Um, I prefer the glue gun over the, over the tape. So this stuff is normally, if you get hold of it, best thing to do first, you probably know this anyway if you've been doing sculpting for a while, but if you crump, if you crump it up, you kind of get more body to it really, so it, when you're putting it on, it, it's a lot, it's a lot bulkier, so therefore you can kind of, you know, you, you just get more body when you put it on, it gives, gives you more and it, it, it's for some strange reason it just gets stronger and stronger it's like if you were making a shape of any any sort i mean once you crumpled it and then you start kind of press it together it, it really does become pretty strong you know and that's a really good idea sorry a really good it's a really good base for for um for the clay you know the clay the clay loves to stick to all these little uh, sort of like crinkled, crinkled, where's the camera? All the crinkled bits, the clay likes to sort of stick into that. It's, it's much better than having, whereas if you were just to put a smooth sheet, um, if you were just gonna layer it up with a smooth sheet, it's not quite the same. So that's like really shiny, which is another point I need to tell you about. But that's really shiny now, um, hasn't got much, um, anything much for the clay to stick to so you can find the clay sort of maybe not want to stick or moving away etc and there's two sides to tin foil as you probably noticed before you've got this really shiny side and then you've got the slightly more matte side i personally always 
have this side showing outwards because um, it's a bit more grippy. So when you when you pump it up, you just um, yeah, it's it's just much more grippy in general. You know, it's just the whole texture of it. I can't find this camera. I can't wait to get a new camera. The whole texture of it is um, less shiny, more grippy, so you can do, you can get your plate stick to it a lot better. And also, if you're um, gluing with a glue gun, the glue sticks to this um, non-shiny surface better, and then you can put your shiny surface onto the glue. If that makes sense. It does to me. So you've always got this coming outwards, ready for the clay. But yeah, um, that's that's what I would say. But Getting your base right for your sculpture with tin foil is is really so important and you should take plenty of time and don't underestimate how much of the actual sculpture you can do with this. You know, this will save you loads of money when it comes to clay because if you spend a lot of time doing this work, you will find that the clay that you use is far, far less. When I did my first few, I didn't do that. I just made some kind of blob. And then I started putting clay on, putting clay on. And, and the clay got thicker and thicker and thicker. And I was like, oh, it's too thick. I've taken it off. But I was using, I was getting through blocks of the stuff. And I was like, I've got to be better at this. So basically, I realized that if I just get this to the proper shape that it needs to be before I even think about clay, it, it's just a no-brainer. You just end up saving so much money. And also, the sculpture comes together so much faster because as you lay it down on the, onto the onto the tin foil, the shapes, it, it's adopting the shape so much easier. It, it, it just, yeah, it just transfers it from a shiny piece of foil into something that starts to look really cool. So tin foil is king when it comes to doing slightly larger sculpture, uh, sculptures, you know. I 100% I say to you, work with this stuff. Just play around with it. Buy several rolls, it's cheap enough, a lot cheaper than clay. Buy several rolls of this and spend, I don't know, as many hours as you want just trying to create. In fact, I might actually do a naked sculpture, basically. I might do a whole sculpture out of this without any clay to, to just show you just how versatile this is. I mean, I've already shown you this one. It's amazing how much detail is actually in that. I didn't take enough photos to show, but inside, on the close-ups of that, there's so much detail in the foil that I'm actually thinking that that would be a really cool thing to do, and I might actually... Um, I might actually do that. I might actually just do that. So that's your foil. Play around with it, get it right, use your glue gun. Try not to use tape unless you really have to. Use items from around the house as, for your base um, and then get, get this as close to the shape of the start of your sculpture that you want it to be before you start putting clay on and you'll save a fortune. But um, that's it really, it's a pretty short one again today, but I'm gonna do a much, much longer one tomorrow over about a very interesting, famous sculpture that I did. And what I say famous, it's not famous, but it's a famous person. So it's gonna be a long one because um, yeah, I think if, you, if you're if you interested, it's gonna be a long one. So I will get that up. Uh, in the next couple of days, but this this is uh, it for today. Um, always good to see you. I'm still waiting on my camera, obviously. That's why I'm not looking at you properly, although I do seem to be looking at you a little bit more today. I don't get this iPad camera. It's a bit weird. Anyway, guys, um, just wanted to cover that one with you. Um, if you like it, great. Um, and I'll catch you on the next one. Take it easy. Bye.